When I think of counterpunchers, two names come to mind. Rafael Nadal and Andy Murray. What's crazy is these two players counterpunch in two completely different ways, and they use two completely different rackets to achieve their victories. So in today's video, we're gonna be analyzing how different styles of counterpunching demand different qualities from their rackets. We're gonna discuss some of the absolute best rackets you can buy today for those counterpunching styles and hopefully help you find the best racket for your tennis. So Rafael Nadal, my personal favorite player of all time, the undisputed king of clay and one of the most explosive tennis players we've ever seen. Nadal's counterpunching relies on his insane physicality using power and spin on top of his insane speed and agility. Rafa uses spin to pull his opponents outside of the court, forcing them to really go for broke if they want to stay on the attack. He also uses a lot of clearance over the net to really buy himself that extra time and margin while on defense. And when the pressure really piles on, Rafa has got one of the most deadly passing shots the game has ever seen. He's capable of finding extreme angles loading with immense spin and power from both sides. On the flip side, we've got Andy Murray. In my opinion, another all-time great who ranks much, much higher in the history books than his slam count would suggest. He counter punches in a completely different way from Rafa, and I'm sure that sounds obvious, but let's break it down. Muzz hits one of the flattest balls on tour. It stays relatively low over the net and does not bounce up that much. This makes it pretty hard to attack his balls because you have to hit up on his shot to make sure you're clearing the net. Andy also uses slices as effectively as we've ever seen in the modern game. This change in spin disrupts his opponent's rhythm, either drawing an error outright or giving Andy the opportunity to seize control of the point with a short ball. I was just thinking, what is he gonna These two different out? styles of counterpunching require two very different types of rackets. Rafa, as you may know, he uses the Babla Aero Pro Drive original, which really accentuates his natural power and spin. Murray Goat, on the other hand, he uses one of the oldest rackets still on tour today, the Head PT57A, which accentuates the control and touch that he uses to keep his opponents uncomfortable on the court. So starting at NTRP roughly 3.5 and above, these are the absolute best rackets for the counter-punching game in today's market. So for the Rafa style, I really think the V-Core 100 is one of the best options. The V-Core 100 is surprisingly comfortable for its class, making it the perfect choice if you kind of struggle with those arm problems. I think it's also one of the most spin-friendly 100 scoring rackets that you can buy today for a couple of important reasons. One, it's got a very wide spin window, especially towards the tip of the frame. This means you can really whip up the back of the ball without worrying about that chunky frame getting in your way. It's also got a very open string pattern, again, especially towards the tip of the frame, which is going to give you that higher launch and make it easy to buy yourself a little bit of extra time while on defense. But it also allows for a little bit more string movement so you could get decent snapback even at slightly lower swing speeds. Three, it's very maneuverable. I think it's probably the fastest swinging 100 square inch racket out there, edging out the pure arrow and the extreme MP. These factors make topspin come incredibly easy so you'll be pulling your opponents off the court with epic angles all day long and these factors are magnified even further if you're the type of player to contact that ball towards the top of the hoop. And my honorable mention is going to go to the extreme MP. No bad luck to your arrow in this one. And for the Andy style, I hate to say it because like, I'm, I'm not really a fan of this racket at all, but I think the Speed Pro is probably one of your best choices. For, for the 3.5 level, 
I love that it's 100 square inch racket. That extra forgiveness is well worth it from all areas of the court. And it also has that 18 by 20 string pattern. It's very precise feeling. And it's rare to find in a frame of this level of forgiveness. Combined, these factors make it very easy to change that ball's direction on a dime. The dwell time on the string bed is also quite long, even at lower swing speeds, which I also really enjoy for slices and touch shots like lobs and droppers. In general, I think this racket is just super versatile. It will play pretty much any shot that you want to hit without any significant trade-offs in terms of spin, maneuverability, control, or power. And here, my honorable mention is going to the Radical MP. You know I love that racket. So on to level 4.0 and above, my favorite racket for the Raffness style of counterpunching is going to go to the Babolat Pure Arrow 98. I think it swings a little bit faster through the air than the normal Pure Arrow, and I love that extra precision that you get from the 16 by 20 string pattern. I think these are definitely worthy trade-offs when you consider how minor that drop-off in power action is and a pretty insignificant reduction in off-center performance, meaning stability essentially. One of the keys to the Rafa style of counterpunching is really maintaining maximum swing speeds and racket head speeds, even when you're pulled outside of the court. The Arrow 98 makes it super easy because that string bed is super consistent. It's a little more open, a little bit more high of a launch angle for sure, but the response to you get regardless of where you actually contact that ball on this string bed is super consistent from hoop edge to hoop edge. Um, that launch angle, like I said, is a little bit higher, but it offers really easy access to spin, so you can, in most cases, trust that ball to come diving back down loaded with top spin. As a bonus factor to the Pure Arrow 98, I think it's just one of the most fun rackets to use that you can buy today. For me, at least, this is probably at least a bit psychological as I just pretend to be Alcaraz. It feels like you can smack forehands from any position, winners from anywhere, and that's pretty, pretty fun. We'll mention to the V-Core 98, which I love for pretty much all the same reasons, but it's not quite as powerful as that arrow. Now on to the Andy Murray style here. I think you're kind of spoiled for choice. It can be tough to choose. You've got the Blade 98 1820. You've got the Head Extreme Tour. You've got the Slinka Whiteout 1820. And I also really like that Dunlop CX 200. For sure, the Blade is the most control choice. And I think the Whiteout is the most powerful. The Extreme Tour is probably the most versatile in terms of spin and maneuverability but the Dunlop in my opinion has probably the best feel it's very plush great ball pocketing and obviously you know that my personal favorite of those four rackets is going to be the whiteout but I also think it plays the best in stock form and a reason for that is going to be that higher swing weight compared to the competition for me the blade 98 1820 is a little bit lower in power especially in that v8 form and I kind of think it lacks a little bit of specialness to be honest the Extreme Tour and the Dunlop CX200 both have a little bit more specialness, but honestly, I think the Dunlop feels more solid, it feels more predictable, and it's got more of like this old head prestige feel. So when I'm imagining Andy Murray switching to a new racket as a 4.0 and he's lost his head contract, I kind of think he might switch to the head CX200. So I, that, that's the reason that I'm gonna give him the win on that one. Good job, Dunlop. I also think it's pretty, it's a pretty underrated racket. Now on to NTRP 4.5 plus or maybe 5.0 plus as well, because I, I don't really, now that I thought about it a little bit, I don't really think that there's a point to gatekeeping rackets to 5.0. I don't even think we need to be gatekeeping rackets in general. Like if you suck at tennis, but you really have fun hitting with your RF 97 autograph, you can't let anyone take that away from you. In the comments section, they will try on Reddit r slash tennis. They will try, but you gotta stay strong. In general, I think the structure is more about suggesting forgiving rackets at the beginning and then less forgiving rackets at the end. So that's kind of more of how I'm looking at it rather than purely by level. Now, if you did find this consumer advice helpful, please let me know in the comments and let me know what other kind of consumer advice you might be looking for so I can put that in the next video. If you'd like to support Tencom financially, which I deeply appreciate, I've got affiliate links to some of the 
best strings you can buy on the market today. Great offerings from Toro Line, Grapple Snake, and Restring, as well as PayPal donation links if you just want to directly support the growth of future projects. So on to the Rafa style for these like high level advanced players. I think it's pretty tough to do a lot better than the pure Aero 98. If you look on tour at some of the best clay court counter punchers, almost all of them are using Bablack. But I think if you just want more control from that string bed, a little bit more consistency, but you still are gonna need that big power from the beam, I think you should look at the T-Fight 305. It does have a stiffer layup of graphite. You definitely feel that on court. There's plenty of power from that beam and the huge, it's like huge 338 swing weight is really gonna help you get a lot of power and easy access to depth and spin on every shot as long as you can really maintain that high racket head speed. The launch angle from that 18 by 20 string pattern is gonna be lower than pretty much any Bablat, but you can easily lift things up by stringing like 10, 15% looser than usual, or also choosing like a more aggressively shaped string to lift that launch angle up a little bit. For the Andy Murray style, I think the best stock choice is probably gonna be the V-Core Pro 97D, which you can probably find on sale now or in the near future because the new version's gonna come out and they're gonna call it the Percept, apparently, which I think is a horrible name. So this 97D offers a ton of great feel and some of the best mass-driven stability on the market. I think it's super solid feeling racket that offers you tons of precision. Great for throwing up lobs, threading the needle on your passing shots and changing direction on fast paced balls. It's a very effective racket on returns. It's like rock solid through contact and I personally really love it on my two hander. My honorable mention here is gonna go to the Dunlop CX200 Tour. 18 by 20, which is a 95, because I think it's probably, and correct me if you think I'm wrong, I think it's probably the closest retail option to Murray's PT57A right now.